All right, YouTube, today I'm gonna to show you how to graph the position, velocity, and acceleration of a car which is moving along with a constant velocity of five meters per second. And I'm gonna show you how position, velocity, and acceleration relate not only conceptually, but also mathematically. Now, YouTube, I know most of you out there are doing algebra-based physics. So I'm gonna explain the relationship between position, velocity, and acceleration entirely using basic algebra and the physics we've already talked about. But I also know some of you out there are trying to apply calculus to what's going on with our kinematics here. So as we go through these three different quantities, I'm gonna put a few notes down here uh, explaining the calculus that's at work in describing the motion of this car. Now I know typically when doing something like reading a book, you start on the left and work your way right. But with what we've been given in the problem, we're actually gonna work the other way here today. You see, in the problem, it tells us the car is moving at a constant speed. And while at first that might make you think about velocity, what I want you to realize is that constant speed is telling us that the speed never changes. And if the speed never changes, that means the acceleration of the car is zero. See, acceleration is the change in velocity over the change in time. So if we're dealing with a constant velocity, like in this problem, there's gonna be no change in velocity, which means the acceleration will always be zero, regardless of how long we let this problem or time run for. Now moving on to velocity. The car is moving at a constant five meters per second. So on our graph, we're gonna see a horizontal line with a vertical value of five. Now I know we're talking about velocity, but I want to look back over at this equation here for acceleration. You see, acceleration is telling us how quickly the change in velocity is occurring. But graphically, what the equation is telling us is how steep this curve is. So if we have an acceleration of zero, that means this line right here is gonna have no change or no slope. The big takeaway there is, the slope of our velocity versus time graph is equal to the magnitude or value of acceleration. Now moving on to position. See, the relationship between position and velocity is very similar to the relationship between velocity and acceleration. In the case of velocity, it was acceleration that dictated how quickly the velocity changed. In the case of position, it's velocity that dictates how quickly position changes. Remember, velocity is given by change in position over change in time. So really what this five meters per second is telling us is that with every second that goes by, the position is gonna increase by a total of five meters. So after one second, the car will have traveled five meters. After two seconds, it will have traveled 10, and so on and so forth. So what we see on our position versus time graph is a nice neat diagonal line. The value of that line increasing by five meters every second. And just like on our velocity versus time graph, where we saw the slope was equal to acceleration, on our position versus time graph, we see the slope is equal to velocity. Now there's one more relationship between position and velocity that I wanna point out. You see, if we look at the position versus time graph, after 10 seconds, our car will have traveled 50 meters. And we can actually determine that from looking at our velocity versus time graph. You see this line formed on our velocity versus time graph can be viewed as a rectangle. And that rectangle has some area. If we look at the base of the rectangle, it's 10 seconds wide. And if we look at the height of the rectangle, it's five meters per second tall. So multiplying those two together, we get 10 times 50. And the important part is the units. If we multiply seconds by meters per second, you'll notice the seconds cancel out and we're left with 50 meters. Ultimately, what this means is the area under the curve of velocity versus time is equal to the displacement or change in position of the object. Now you'll notice I said the area under the curve was equal to displacement, not position. And that's because we made one colossal assumption in graphing our position versus time for this car. We assumed the car started at a position of zero. 
but an object doesn't have to start at a position of zero. We could have just as easily graphed the position of this car as having initially started at say a position of 30. It's that initial position that we made an assumption about. Regardless, this has been how to graph the position, velocity, and acceleration of an object moving at a constant speed. And on that note, that's all for now.